成为。And many boys in the squad have spoken about your communication, how great you've been in the tough times when you've had to have honest, brutal conversations, but also you know when to motivate and support them. Do you feel that's something you take pride in your management, that emotional intelligence? How important is that for you? I think it's, it's, it's very important and it's, it's part of uh, our job, uh, especially sometimes at tough time when we have 10, 15 minutes that we need to adjust things and we need to use the right words because the, the time is very short. So I, I try to use that time also to adjust things. And then in terms of motivation, these kind of things, I just try to be, uh, I just try to do everything to, to help them. And you've emphasized not relying solely on Cole Palmer because that's not really sustainable going forward. The world has opened their eyes to his talent. It's clear that this season he's being man-marked by two, three players yeah. consistently. How do you coach a player with his talent to sort of adapt his game or use other players around him mm -hmm. to free up more space? Yeah, no, first of all, we use him also. We use that, uh, uh, that weapon from the opposite team that uh, if they want to mark man-to-man -man call, probably we need to find a different solution. But also I think is the next step forward for call to make use to play with uh, that kind of situation. He has to learn. Uh, sometimes you can see that he gets a little bit frustrated because it's not easy to have always 90 minutes, 95 minutes uh, being marked man-to-man. -man. But uh, all that kind of players, that level, they, they used to be man, man, marked man-to-man. When we spoke previously, you mentioned Enzo's role on the ball was more of an attacking midfielder and off the ball he was more defensive like mm -hmm. Gundogan and Declan Rice. We, you have some of the best midfield options in the world with Lavia, Caicedo, Jusby Hall, loads of players. But do you think under Enzo Maresca we'll ever see a Caicedo, Lavia and Enzo Fernandez midfield three? Or do you think it wouldn't work? No, 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 for sure. For sure can happen, no yeah. doubt. Uh, I think the first game against City, we play with all of them. Uh, the, 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 the main thing is that uh, everything we do is to, to have defensive balance. Mm. So sometimes you need to, the decision that we take is also because we think how we can have defensive bal balance and offensive balance. That sort of answers my next question, but we can go into it a little bit more. One beautiful thing is you have a lot of variety in your attack. A lot of your attacking the players can play either wing, can play a 10, can play an 8. Are you now looking at more of the defensive duties of these attacking players when it comes to picking who's starting? It's, as I said, it's a matter of balance. For sure, if you use, uh, uh, for instance, call, uh, we used to, uh, we used to, 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 to get around call with the more physicality player because uh, we know that, uh, especially Premier League, is a tough league and you need to be defensively strong. Uh, probably the last game against Liverpool with uh, Moy and with Romeo, uh, Enzo was on the bench, but that, that's, that means that uh, he, he will be always on the bench. But it's just, uh, as I said, a matter of uh, the right balance. And the stats don't lie this season. Chelsea are having very strong second halves. You've only conceded three goals in the second halves of your games. When you come out, you win more duels, you score more goals. What are you saying to the boys at half time? That's making the performance look stronger. Yeah, as I said, we try to adjust things at half time because when you, have, when you are with the same players and with the same team for two, three years, you can adjust things even after 10 minutes during the first half. But when it's a new process, it's very difficult. So you need uh, the, the, the half time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, as I said, and to adjust the things that you have seen that they are not working well for during the first half. And this is what we try to do at half time. And going back to that sort of Malo Gusto clip, do you feel that now with your style of management, the players are able to see tactical changes on the pitch themselves and coach themselves without you shouting from the pitch? Yeah, side? absolutely. Absolutely. I can see not only in the pitch, also when we have some uh, meeting in terms of video clips, you can see that sometimes the players, they start to recognize for themselves solution. And for me as a manager, it's one of the best moments because you can see that uh, they are learning and they are very grateful about that. And you described your performance against Liverpool as one of the best all season. It was a great tactical battle. How much do you feel your side are now getting into that rhythm? You kind of look like you know what your starting eleven is as well. 
Uh, I think, as I said, Liverpool game was very good. Uh, we were good on the ball and off the ball in the way we want to be. Uh, but for sure, we have many, many things that we can do better. As I said, probably in that game, we could attack better, especially the last third. And probably we defend very well uh, because going to Anfield and thinking that you are not going to concede chance or transition, I think it's impossible. It's not, uh, it's not real, it's more PlayStation. So we, we knew that, uh, but the guys, they were brave, uh, trying to press man to man. And the, the game was very good. Second half, Nico Jackson came out, scored a goal, has been converting this season. He seems to always be a topic of discussion whether he scores or doesn't score. Just how key is he for you in your plans as a striker? You know, you still got Christopher and Kunku in your squad, loads of creative players, but now working with him more consistently, what do you think his ceiling is like? No, Nico is, uh, we know very well that is very important for us on the ball. Is working fantastic, he's scoring goal, he's assist, he's linking with his teammates and off the ball is uh, is working hard, he's pressing in the way we want to press and he's doing fantastic with us. As you said, we have Christo also there that uh, is going to help us because the season is very long, we have so many games and also sometimes the game plan can be different, can be more for Christo than Nico and also we have young talent like Mark Guyu, so we, have, we, we can choose. We saw against Liverpool, Christopher came on and took that left wing role. We've also seen Nico Jackson excel in that left wing. Could you just quickly talk us through why you thought he would be better on the left wing and if we would ever see Christo up front and Nico on the left instead? Uh, more the first one. <laughs> I don't see Nico in the wide area. Sometimes can happen for sure, but I don't see him there. And the reason why Cristo, uh, because we wanted to have two very attacking players in that moment. Uh, and so we decided for Cristo wide, but uh, also we could play with Cole wide and Cristo inside. But it was just uh, for that moment. And next up, you have the visit of Newcastle. They've struggled with their form recently, their last win being mid-September. But despite this, what threat do you feel that they can pose to this Chelsea team and how much do you have to be wary? Sometimes we focus too much on stats, but this is sometimes when teams perform their best, when they're under pressure. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And especially that kind of a team, uh, Newcastle is very clear. They are physically strong, they are very good. Probably they have been a bit unlucky, especially the last game against uh, Brighton. But uh, overall, I think they deserve some more points and the way they work uh, al almost many different years together it's quite clear and I really like uh, Newcastle and as you said probably this is the moment when teams they are able to to do something uh, good because they are in, in difficult. And it's a really important period coming up for your team. Aside from fixtures in Europe and domestic cups, you'll face Newcastle, Manchester United, Arsenal in the next three Premier League games. How do you mentally approach this period? Is it any different? And how important is it to sort of gain some momentum, as we call it in football, to end the year on a high? No, yeah, for sure. Uh, at the end, we always said the same. We need to play against all, all of them. Uh, for sure now, we've, we 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 face, we met Liverpool and now, as you said, we have three games in a row, uh, Premier League, Newcastle, United, Arsenal, but uh, I also think that the previous game against, uh, I don't know, Bournemouth, Wolves, the, the Premier League is tough, you can see Bournemouth last weekend, you can see Wolves last weekend, so it's, it's very difficult to, to play against all the team and we, we're going to try, as I said, game by game to do our best. And lastly, you've had a pre-season, eight games, Conference League. Do you have a favourite moment you mentioned earlier, sometimes when it clicks in the players and they're becoming their own coaches, yet in the training room, in the dressing room, on the pitch, do you have a moment? No, what, what I can see clearly that uh, being with them every day, it's something that you can see, you can smell. My, feel, my feeling has been always game after game, seeing even in pre-season where we faced uh, teams that they were already together many, many years. So for us it was very difficult.